Hey everybody. Um, okay, here's another one of these uh, vlog things. I hadn't planned to do one uh, immediately now, but basically I think some people misunderstood my, um, especially the title of my video for the first one yesterday. Um, so let me just make something clear to you here. Um, the video was titled COVID-19 depression uh, in reference to the economical uh, term depression. Because I feel, as I said yesterday, I feel like that's that's what we had it for. And that's why I'm worried about it. It was not titled COVID-19 depression because I am depressed. Um, I had actually had some messages, which I, you know, I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. Um, of people who are saying, you know, are you okay? Uh, you know, I know we're all feeling bad and all that kind of stuff. I'm not depressed. Um, don't don't worry about me. I mean this. Um, I'm probably the last person you need to worry about. There will be people jumping off the roof left and right uh, before I get depression. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, sometimes I'm I'm feeling blue and I'm I'm maybe disappointed and a bit pissed off right now because it's lovely weather um, and I can't really do anything outside and I would really love to do th things in Hamburg before before we move and I can't do that. I'm pissed off about that. But, you know, that's pretty much the extent of it. I, I'm i doing well. Um, I have a job. I'm making money. I'm keeping busy as always. I've got tons of video games. And, you know, to be honest, I I was born for this shit, right? I've been doing home office for almost a year and a half now. Um, that is not something that, that will you know give me any problems um and i'm i'm a i'm a geek uh, i'm you know i'm staying home in you know isolation at the best of at normal times um don't you know i'm 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 well prepared i've got several rpgs that i've kept for lean times you know like 60 hour plus rpgs that I haven't played through, and um, it's it's all good. I, I I nearly said social distancing there, and um, somebody, uh, a good friend of mine, pointed out to me yesterday, a doctor, by the way, <laughs> that the term social distancing is completely dumb, and it should actually be. I hadn't thought about that, but he's completely right. Um, it should it should actually be physical distancing because what we need in these times, as he said. Uh, very much right now is social contact. Even though we can't have physical contact, we should have social contact. And that is one of the reasons why I'm making these videos because I feel like, you know, um, you know, I can't really talk to you directly, but, you know, I feel like I can see you and uh, you can see me when I, when I do these things. Um, so, yeah, gist of it is don't worry. The worst thing so far about this whole lockdown for me um, is that they cancelled the uh, Ferguson Khabib fight uh, later in the month that I'd looked very much forward to. I guess Ferguson is now fighting the Justin Gaethje. I don't know. I'm not excited about that. I want. I wanted to see. I wanted to see Ferguson Khabib, and I guess Khabib can't can't leave uh Dagestan or something <laughs> I, I don't know um yeah that's that's a bit disappointing but that's about like the extent of it you know I'm I'm really doing well I do realize that I'm I'm in a in a special position and that other people uh, have it way worse right now um you know I have I have a number of friends who I don't know they were going through hard times anyway uh, due to like personal circumstances that have nothing to do with this coronavirus thing, but 
if you if you were already in a situation like that and then something like this happens um that is, is that is that is tough that is especially bad if you already have um wait, let me have a sip of coffee here i just saw that i still have some coffee left this video is not sponsored by starbucks i stole this cup back in the day i think in vienna because i liked it so much <laughs> because i'm an outlaw i just stole it so uh yeah so not sponsored by starbucks quite the opposite um yeah so i i i understand that it is it's very tough for some people right now i understand that very much um but i'm trying you know as we all should in these times you know try try to support people like that somehow you know even over a distance even if you can't visit them because like the fucking fucking schleswig holstein is locked down um it must be like the most nazi state in germany <laughs> I, I don't know i think i still don't get that um yeah so but don't don't worry about me worry about the people that that are close to you that you know that might might need might need a i don't know a, a a nice word in these times where you can't hug them you know that's i think that's that's the most most important thing but you know while we're here and now you know I'm, I'm doing good um might as well i don't know talk about some stuff i i've done i don't i haven't prepared this video these are t completely off the cuff it's not like i have any notes or any it's not like i ever have any notes if i do anything <laughs> uh you know um so what am i doing i released a podcast yesterday on ring um so go to private citizen press if you're interested in that you know the company ring i wanted to do a non-coronavirus episode um so do some some other privacy topic I'll, I'll get to coronavirus soon enough i'm currently researching this uh pep pt p e p p p t this pan european pandemic thing so it's a, like a framework um for uh smartphone apps that can do voodoo they do like, kind of like contact tracing without saving location and i mean that's the idea they they, they create like a U, uh, id for every phone that can't be traced that's what they're saying and then you have to turn bluetooth on and they use bluetooth low energy to kind of um, calculate the distance to other bluetooth phones uh, I wonder how much battery that's gonna take. <laughs> that's one thing I haven't asked them. Anyway, I'm in kind of like in contact with them because they are doing this framework, and they actually they wanted to release the beta two days ago. I don't think they have yet. Um, it's like they had a they wanted to have a press conference and that got delayed. It's like um, they're trying to do this very fast and obviously still secure and. Uh, compliant to the uh, GDPR which is like a hard thing which normally it takes months maybe years and they're doing this like in a week or something or two and um, yeah I've, I've sent them some I'm, I'm inquiring I've got some documentation I'm, 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 I'm gonna write an in-depth article about this and I'm I'm researching that I'm probably gonna do an episode um, on it uh, for the private citizen once I've once I've got some technical information and how it actually works, like the thing is that in Germany this is supposed to be uh, open source and can be used for in all of Europe by health organizations. In Germany, the, the Robert Koch Institute, which is like our CDC, um, is developing an app that will be um, will also use this framework, and I've contacted them uh, about their app. They have actually they released an app I think yesterday uh that that you can use and you can donate your um s health like you know smart tracker you know like fitbit data health data to them and so they want to basically from your pulse data and from your exercise data uh they think they can then determine if you have symptoms of covid i'm guessing 
Um, it's all a bit. Apparently, a lot of people are doing it. I find it a bit questionable. Uh, of course, you know, I, I don't know. It's just like it's just like this. It, I find this. I'm a bit irritated by Germany being like this for years, decades, being like this very privacy conscious society and now it's all out of the window now everybody's just like yeah have my health data which is like your that's the most personal data you have now the rki is saying that they it's not personally identifiable um it doesn't look like they're collecting location data so i'm actually you know if that's right it could probably uh be pseudonymized but i'm like i just I'm like not convinced that they can actually get enough. Um, so my thing is, I'm not convinced that they're collecting this data um, to actually like that. That would actually help in the current situation. Uh, I think they want that data because I mean they're a government uh, a research institute that you know this like pandemic research and stuff they just want that data for their research um which is okay you know um that's okay like my wife does for example uh works in a hospital does does research like background research on heart disease and you know you need patient data for that that's okay um it's just like they're they're saving this data for 10 years because apparently that's the scientific standard and i'm just thinking they're going to use that for all kinds of studies and they're not saying that, you know, they're not, they're saying we, you know, help us now, help society uh, with this coronavirus thing, give us the data now. And it just seems like, it just seems like a data grab. It seems like, hey, we, we got this great excuse. Let's make this app. Let's have people donate all this data. I'm, you know, I'm not, I just feel weird about it. I'm not saying it's actually bad but it's like i wouldn't do it if i if i wanted to donate my health data they sh they, they would have to tell me what they're actually like how this is helping they're just saying okay we get data and then we can kind of figure out who's infected and then we feed that into they literally say like mathematical model like scientific models they don't specify um they don't specify any studies they want to do with that it's just like you know if you do actual um if you want patient data <laughs> Like like in a hospital, right? So if, let's say uh, uh, you're doing a procedure and stuff like, like my wife does. And then, you know, the doctor's doing a procedure and you're doing a study on how effective this procedure is. Then you can get the patients to sign. Uh, it's all voluntary. Like they can sign... Um, this you know they they can they can sign that they give like data about this procedure their health data basically to the researchers which is like that's how a university hospital works right you go there because um, they have good um they're using state of the art methods and stuff like that um but like the kind of the trade off is that you you know um they they need data to 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 test procedures and you know get this get you know do do research do science um, which is okay, but they very specifically specify, you know, what, what the state is being used for. And the Robert Koch Institute's not doing that for this. They're just like, save us, save society, send us all your health data. And I'm like, no, like my, my fitness data is very, very, um, sensitive data. Like, um, I mean, I stopped using Fitbit because I don't want Google to have that. Um, yeah, this is weird. Anyway, they, they did that app, and now they're doing this Pep PT app, and I'm I'm just very skeptical about that app. First of all, I want I like they're all about like we're encrypting this, and you know we're generating these IDs that can't be traced, and I'm like, how are you doing that? Like yeah, I have a technical white paper and it doesn't say anything like how do you encrypt it? What what algorithm do you use? How do you generate the ID? I want to see the algorithm and all of that. And providing providing all of that works, 
and is actually bulletproof, which is hard to pull off when you're developing this app for a month, right? Even if you have the uh, BSE and, you know, the German Bundesamt für Sicherheit in der Informationstechnik word this long, uh, even if you have those involved and, and everybody, it's kind of like... And then even if they do all that, it's like how many people need to install this app to give you significant like first of all i mean the first goal would be to give them significant data um so the rki is doing that for their app i mean this is another app this is not to fit this app this is like the the, the tracing app they want to do that um to have data uh, on the spread of the disease which i get you know that's 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 okay i mean that's for me that's a much better reason to to collect data than like just give us all your health data it's just like that's a specific reason And if it works, that's good because right now they're using mathematical models, which is not, you know, they have limited bearing on 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 reality. Uh, reality is not that easy that you can, you know, uh, that you can, you know, just model everything. I mean, it's it's great enough if you have organisms like in a petri dish in a lab condition. Yes, then you can say, well, there are the growth is exponential, but even then, it's not ex it's like near anyway. But like in the real world, obviously things are different. And if they can map that, that's great. The question is how many how many people need to have to installed this app for that to be statistically significant? Because I mean, this is just working between phones that have that app installed. If I'm in a If I'm in a supermarket and there's no other phone nearby or just one guy, but the whole store is full and they all don't have the app installed, like how does that give them any information that is useful? Um, and then I guess you need an even higher like install rate um, to see, you know. So what they want to do is, I'm mean, when they want to develop this app, the, the most important reason is they want to lift the lockdown, which I'm all for. Um, and then everybody has the app installed. And then if you come close to somebody who's who later develops symptoms, then they can warn you to quarantine yourself so that only, you know, that only a few people uh, need to, relatively speaking, need to quarantine themselves, not the whole society, you know, and we don't continue to just fucking drive, pile drive the economy into the ground which which I think is, is generally good. But like how many people need to have the app installed to just, You know, if I, so if if they lift the lockdown and if I install this app and I go out, right, and I go go through to my normal life routine from now on, but I have the app installed. Um, after a week, right, um, if the if no if the app doesn't tell me, I've never been in contact with anybody who was infected. Like, how high is my confidence that that's actually true? Like, how high is the possibility that I was close to somebody who was infected but just didn't have the app installed. And I guess that would change, like how high that confidence is, would change massively uh, based on how many people have installed this app. This app. Um, so one of the things I actually asked them is like, uh, you know, thinking we have 80 million people in, in Germany, like how many people need to have this app installed for you to have any confidence? Like, first of all, in... in in num in like the 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 numbers you get for like how the disease is spreading and and that you give the government where they might decide that we need to go into lockdown again or whatever um, and how high is my confidence uh, if you're telling me I wasn't like if not if the apps isn't telling me I wasn't infected like how high is my confidence that that's actually true because if that is ne negligible if it just like works like some of these antibody tests where you can basically only be sure if it tells you you've you've been in contact with somebody who's been infected or like as the test goes that you have uh covid um if if it's like in basically a um a test that can only tell you you're infected and doesn't give you any other in, like if it says you're clean that doesn't mean you're clean it just doesn't mean it just means it hasn't found the thing maybe you know and with the app it would be like um if If it tells you you were close to somebody who was infected, you can be very confident about that. But if it doesn't tell you anything, you can't be confident at all. Like if, if that's the case, right? If if that's the case, and 
I write about that and like how many people will install that app, right? So how many how many people would install that app out of altruism? Basically, it comes down to that, right? If you, if you publish that, it's like the only people that will install the app are the ones who are installing it out of altruism to help the same people that are sending the health data, I guess, to the RKI. Um, but you know, I get you will get a much higher installation if people do this because they feel like, hey, if the app is telling isn't telling me anything, I can go about my life normally. Right? Um, yeah, interesting questions. So that's that's the stuff I'm working on in the moment, and then I'm also working on a um, review. Okay, this is uh, German. Um, I'm writing a review about uh, Simon Simon Stolenhorg. I'm, I'm I'm continuing to try to pronounce his name correctly, but my Swedish is uh, non-existent. Um, who, you know, I love. I've got his his art books. Two of them are there because I was checking them for the for the story and obviously they have um you know the first one was called tales from the loop and i have a series now on amazon called tales from the loop and if you haven't seen that and you have, if you have amazon pretty much go and turn the turn turn this crap off and um and watch it now because it's it's brilliant it's really good i really really enjoyed it it's it's very different um like his books but it makes it does justice to the books um, it's obviously different because it's a different medium and they very wisely so his books most most of the stuff in the books is set in Sweden because he's he's about my age I think he was he was born a year later than me but like um, so he's it's like uh, if you don't know his paintings go to Simon Stolenhawk uh, dot se uh, or just Google Simon Stolenhawk I said you would you know if you if you pronounce it English or German. Um, it's like an A with a, this is like a Stargate A, uh, <laughs> and uh, Google him. He, he, like all of his, many of his paintings are on his website. That's how he became well known. He's just like a painter, and he put his stuff online and became known over social media. And uh, then he made his art books and had Kickstarters, and it's all set like in his youth in Sweden. Um, so he mixes like paintings of of the landscape of his youth with like futuristic robots and stuff. But then there's like cars from the eighties in there, it's great. Um and they were very smart to set the series in the US because they're filming it in the US, the American actors. Um I, th I think it's very smart that they didn't try to pretend it was in Sweden. That would have been a disaster. Uh and it it's got Jonathan Price in it and I j I love Jonathan Price. He was he's great. I mean he was great in Bond, uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. Um he's brilliant in Taboo, he's brilliant in so many other things. Um, they have a perfect role for him and he's like this is great so uh, it's very different um, but like it, it conjures up like the same emotions as his paintings which make it worse work and some of the stuff there like the so the the um, like the robots and stuff there like completely just like in the books uh, they did an excellent job on that like the the effects are great and it's very slow. Like it's not an action series. It's um, it's it's kind of like the his paintings. It's like it focuses on people and like emotions and stuff. It's a great series. Uh, recommend it wholeheartedly. Tales from the Loop on Amazon. Watch it now. Um, yeah, and that's it for me. So um, major takeaway: I'm okay. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'm good. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know when I'll when I'll do another one of those. I wanted to. I didn't actually didn't plan to do one today, but I thought I'll I'll need you to know that you don't need to worry. Um, I am humbled that actually people are caring. <laughs> humbled that people are watching this, and then they're like, you know, uh, are you you sound you sound like depression? Are you okay? I'm okay. Um, I'm I'm not I'm not a guy who I mean I, I guess if you watch The Sopranos I guess everybody can get depression I guess that's the takeaway but I, so far I'm I'm good I'm keeping busy and uh, I don't feel like I'm a um I'm a prime prime subject or whatever you would call that. Yeah, so uh, I hope 
I hope you're doing good as well. Um, I, I'll just continue to say, hang in there. We'll get we'll get through this. Um, just don't let people sucker you into sending them the health data or like all this all this crap. I felt I feel like I'm trying. So my my coping mechanism for this shit is to maybe last point. Uh, my coping me mechanism for this shit is to try to live my life normally as normally as I can, because I'm like. I might catch this thing tomorrow and maybe I have some pre-existing condition I didn't know about and as Obama said you might die uh, I might die um, <laughs> and then then I'll be even feel even more shit if I spent like the last few weeks of my life <laughs> being deadly afraid and like I can't go out and then you get it anyway and you die and you're like fuck this shit so I might as well <laughs> have a little bit of fun um, and so I'm, I'm just living my life. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm cooking. Um, I'm working a lot. I'm producing podcasts. Um, watching UFC fights, uh, which is great. Uh, it's just like when you think the world is insane, and everybody is insane, and just seeing some people beating the shit out of each other, and then being really nice to each other afterwards is just great um yeah so i'm 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 good i hope you too just find some find something and you know try to that would be my advice try to i mean i'm not saying go out and do like crazy shit like it's okay i'm 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 not down with all this government uh overstepping their their line and being like completely draconian but i feel like you know if you're voluntarily staying at home that's cool i mean that's good and it's a it's a good thing um, just don't overdo it. Like, don't worry. Don't stop watching TVs. But I mean, this. It's been months, literally now, since they reported anything you need to know. That there's not. We know, like, you know everything. Like, they. We know everything. We know who dies of this shit. We know that we don't know how it actually kills people. We. That everything has been reported. The only thing they've been reporting for the last weeks and months is like, oh, now it's like 259 more people died, and now we're at uh, 51,000, whatever. It's like just keeping score. Who gives a fuck? Seriously, it doesn't affect you. I mean, it doesn't. Like, it sounds. I, I wanted to stop this, and now I'm right. Anyway, I'll just keep going. I'll do these things like I want to do them. This is my vlog, so fuck off. <laughs> um, like, it doesn't... If 50,000 or 80,000 or 180,000 or a million people die in Germany now doesn't affect me at all. Like, I care about my family and some people I love, and I care about them not dying. And the rest doesn't matter. It doesn't... I'm, I'm staying inside. I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm... The only time I go out is, like, I, I go out f to buy the shit I need. Like, literally just food. Um, and I, I do a lot of running these days because I feel like we're, we're heading for the post-apocalypse. And if I learn one thing out of Fallout, it's like, I need, I need to be fit. Like, <laughs> you know, when I, go, I wander out into the wasteland, I don't want to be an overweight slob. So I'm like, I'm just using this time to get as fit as I can. Um, so I'm doing that and then I'm staying home. So I don't need any, I don't need anything. I need, need, don't need to know anything more. What does it change? Like, yes, I feel shit if like 50,000 more people die, but I can't do anything about it. So, what is the what is the media rant incoming? What is the fucking media doing? Like, why do they think that is important? I don't understand that. Yes, clicks and money, but like they're not getting any money because their advertisers are not paying for this crap. Why are they doing it? I mean, in the in America, yes, in the US, we need to apparently they need to you know orange uh, uh, orange man bad. They need to blame Trump for everything. So okay, um, but over here it's like I don't. I, I work in the fucking industry and I don't get it. I don't like who gives a shit. Um, somebody um, was it Jürgen Goiter? I think Jürgen Goiter, also known as Tante, uh, wrote a wrote an interesting thing on his blog where he was like, "This is like all journalism is sports journalism now. It's all like completely shit. It's all just like numbers. It's like countries 
and we're keeping score and Italy's here and China's there and Germany's there and who's doing better and who's flattening the curve more. And it's like, it's all <laughs> irrelevant fucking bullshit. It doesn't matter one bit. I mean, to you and me, it matters like if somebody close to us dies, but like that's not going to be reported in the news, right? So... Stop, just stop watching TV. It it helps. Just stop. Just do something. Do something productive with your life. <laughs> anyway, that's... Sorry. Sorry, I just had to get that... To get that rant out. <laughs> I need to rant to somebody. I mean, we need... We all need, like, social interaction. And that's... That's that's my version of it. Anyway, that's... I think I'm, I'm stopping now. Otherwise, I will never... This this will be, like, a three-hour thing. Um, if you watched all of that... <laughs> Thank you. Um, maybe it. Uh, I don't know. I hope it 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 helped it helped you a little bit. Con please continue to give me feedback, um, comments under the video, or uh, preferred probably email fab dot industries slash contact. Fab dot industries slash contact has all the information on it. Yes, dot industries is a valid top level domain. <laughs> I'm trying to teach that to people. Um, yeah, and uh, I'd like to hear from you how, how you're doing. And if you need somebody to talk, you know, if the only person is me, okay, I'll oblige. Send me an email. <laughs> <sighs> Have a good day. I'm just going to think I'm just going to go for, for a nice run now in the nice weather and... Uh, in, enjoy the sun a bit but keep moving so the cor quarantine police doesn't like beat me to a pulp <laughs> see you guys